So as I said, all vowel sounds stem from ah. It's the la, with the exception of u and e. We're going to focus on ah right now and the vowel modifications within which we use as release valves to go up the scale. As we're singing down lower, la, it really doesn't change. La, tenor, you're going to start to feel some tension in the throat as you get to right about the E flat or the E. What happens is, as we go from ah to ah, like loft, as we go up the scale, and it's very subtle. It's not a contrived feeling. Feeling I will never ask you to do anything that is unnatural. In fact, it should be more natural, not unnatural. If someone asks you to do something that feels really unnatural, chances are it's not right, okay? So here we go. La, you hear me shift just ever so slightly to the awe like loft? Listen closely again. A la, right? All right, so ah goes to awe like loft as we start to go up the scale. We continue on the loft as we go up. And by the way, it remodifies on the way back down exactly the same way as it did when I went up. So, go ahead. La. You hear it re revert back to the ah sound on the bottom? Here we go again. La. here around the F sharp, G, G sharp, you're going to start to feel yet again that sensation of like a pulling sensation or like your, your larynx are dropping down uh, in the chord and making it harder to go up and sing the sound. So ah, uh, like loft at the top, converts to uh, like hook, okay? Now, it's subtle. I'm not going la, la, la hook, okay? It's just a subtle thing in the back of the throat. Now remember, we sit up straight, we take our breath. The jaw stays open and as wide as we can possibly make it. Ah, it's the la, ah. We don't move it, we don't shift the jaw or close it down as we go up the scale. We look at our mirrors and we make sure that it stays open. When I go, <laughs> la. how nothing moves, nothing changes, but a subtle little re-yawning, like the sensation like you're yawning uh, uh, in the back of the throat to create more space to give me that loft to uh, hook. Okay, now you hear me shifting a little bit towards the uh, like hook. Now I go from ah on the bottom, I go a little bit up the scale to ah like loft, and all like loft starts to migrate to uh, like hook. Now this is really important because everybody's voice is different, but it usually or predominantly happens at the same part on the chord or the same part in the scale. So once you've identified where your vowel modification happens, it happens about at the same place. Now, what the, ideally, okay, since you don't know where this is probably on your chord, Ideally, we actually wait as long as we can before we make the modification. Because if we modify too early, we don't have anywhere else to go. We have no more room to create another release valve to relax the chest, the neck, and the throat and open up the back of the throat as we go up. So instead, for some, if you have a higher voice, you may not go to loft all the way until the G. Hello. Right? And a second ago, I actually went a little towards hook. Now, I know this is a lot of information. Bear with me. It will make sense and it will come. If you've done other vocal programs and you've gone to other vocal teachers and so forth, again, I asked you to give me the benefit of the doubt. Check those in at the door. Don't try to speak three languages at once. Let's speak, you know, the language of this guy's method, the language of this guy's method. 
hang with me on this. Again, how to sing better than everybody else, okay? So as we go up, la, 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 Now I want to point this out. As you notice as I'm going up the scale, I'm not going la, and I'm not pulling all that weight up into the sound. Instead, I'm singing the bottom pretty easy. I'm not going la, and I'm not singing the low end really hard. I'm actually singing it really gentle. And as I go up, I have this thing I like to call little boy voice. So my voice kind of sounds really kind of little and, and, uh, and, you know, little boy voice. If you notice when we first started this thing and I gave my introduction, you hear my voice was kind of manly and down here. And as I warm up, my voice starts to get that nice bright timbre of what I call little boy voice. So as we go up the scale, la, did you hear me go la, a, uh, all the way to hook. And then, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, when I came back down. And they modify at the exact same places. They don't modify in different spots. Now, why are we doing this? Again, we're doing this to eliminate moving targets. We want to be able to sing the same way night after night after night or day after day without worrying about, did I, do I have the high note? Where's the high note? Can I get the high note? Because it no longer becomes about the high note. It becomes about the vowel modification. What do you mean, Ken? No, this note's always been high for me. No. Once you find out how to mod modify the vowel, you've got good support. You're not over singing. You're not singing like crazy and over stressing it. You're not singing the bottom so hard that it makes it difficult to go up to sing the top. You can go. La okay. And if you notice, I went, <clears throat> listen again. La now I actually went ah uh, to ah uh, to uh to oo, uh, which is our last vowel modification. Listen closely again and you'll hear me go ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, and oo, uh, and I'll remodify the same way again on the way back down. La Hear that? Now, if I do it quickly, I got really good at it to where it's such a natural response that I can go in and out of my chest and my head. And by the way, I did connect my chest with my head, but I'm so good at it now. And I've built up the upper midsection and the bridge, the passaggio it's called, or the passageway, which is the, the bridge between the chest and the head voice. And we're going to connect and we're going to learn how to grow that bridge to where you'll no longer have a register break. You'll no longer go, la, right? La, you'll be able to go in and out of that without ever, ever, ever having that register break and utilize the total spectrum of your voice, okay? So as I go up again, la, la. This is the high C, or what we call um, C5, okay? Now, the C5, which is the high C, this, this note right here is considered to be pre pretty much the highest note in the male tenor range, right? Interesting, because we now have, I've taken this to such a, an extreme level that we can actually continue and move on into the female soprano range as a tenor, or even me, I'm a high berry, I'm not even a tenor and be able to grow the voice into the upper midsection and take it all the way up. For me, I have a double a B, I can sing all the way B, not, not the double C, but the B. So it's a, it's a pretty high note. It's about all you really need as a male tenor. Anything beyond that is gonna sound like a dog whistle and annoying. But now we're gonna move on and I'm gonna discuss the A vowel as we go and its importance for these same vowel modifications. Are you ready?